the ultimate tour of Resorts World in Las Vegas. I'm Chris, this is Yellow Productions. I'm gonna turn the camera around so you can see what I see. And in this video, I'm gonna take you into Resorts World, show you around the resort, show you around the hotel lobby, show you around the 40 restaurants and bars. We're gonna take a look at the whole thing. Well, except maybe the casino since they don't like cameras all throughout casinos all that much. But um, entering in through the self parking or main taxi rideshare drop off area, when you come into your left, the first thing you see is the sports book. This is called the dog house. There's the sports book here, bars, tables uh, that you can eat at and have drinks at. There's Famous Food Street Eats, which is their famous Asian themed food court that we're gonna go through in just a bit. I will then take you through the hotel lobbies because there's three hotels in here. And then I will take you through the district, their shopping area. So we'll go ahead and walk through the sports book here. Now Resorts World is the most expensive casino ever to have built in Las Vegas. It was cost 4.3 billion dollars that's billion with a b it's been under development for at least a decade it is situated where the stardust hotel used to be that was torn down a long time ago it's right next to the circus circus to the south kitty corner from the wind and the encore the venetian the palazzo nearby so is the uh, fashion show mall now i mentioned that was the self parking entrance there's two parking garages there's also a parking garage for hotel guests. And the, if you were to come in from that parking garage, you would come in this door right here. Now there's the theater store and tickets because this is also where the Resorts World Theater is. This is where Katy Perry is gonna play. This is where Michael Buble is going to play. But right across from that is a Starbucks, a pretty neat looking Starbucks. This Starbucks has been busy all day, every day, seems to be definitely one of the most popular food and beverage attractions here. There are two Starbucks on property. There is the one we just looked at. There's a second one that we'll see in the district shopping area. They've got pretty good signs to direct you throughout. Uh, and I will say Resorts World to me feels like what the Bellagio felt like when it was new or what the Mirage felt like when it was new, it just really upped the level of what a Vegas resort is. Unfortunately, some places are going into business. This was like a lobster roll place that's closed. I don't think they've had the business they thought. So instead there's a place in front of it selling margaritas for $14 a pop. Uh, that's in front of the poker room just back here. Now, this is the casino floor that we will not walk through with our camera on, but we will just walk by. Uh, <clears throat> lots of slot machines, lots of tables. As I say, it has not been busy here, so it doesn't feel perhaps quite as vibrant as maybe some of those center strip properties like the Bellagio or Caesars Palace currently do with their gaming. I was actually just recently downtown Vegas yesterday, and places like the Circa also had a lot more energy, I feel, than this casino floor does currently. But I think as more people come here, that'll all rectify itself. Famous food, street eats. This is the, I, I consider this to be the centerpiece of their casino. It is a food hall court with 16 eateries, primarily Asian themed, Singaporean chicken rice, Malaysian Hakan noodles, Indian food from Singapore or kind of Malaysia style Indian food. The way you order are from kiosks that girl was just using. I've had the charqui tao and the dumplings. Both of them are quite good. Food court here, not cheap, actually quite expensive. If you wanna see like what all these different stalls sell and you're like, Chris, you are walking absolutely too fast. Uh, good news for you. I have a detailed video that just walks you through this food court. Take a look at all the different foods. I'll show you the foods that I'm eating. Go more in detail about it. The other centerpiece of this food hall is the central bar in the middle, uh, which kind of has all the languages up there for the different nationalities. It reminds me of something out of Blade Runner. That's kind of what this place feels like, particularly with the blue lighting in it, with the spinning, large, waving cat in the middle. It's just, they've created a super cool vibe in this food hall. 
and they didn't like tuck it away in a corner or up on the third floor. They put it right next to the casino, right in the central part of the casino. So I think that's pretty cool. And actually, they it's like such a part of the casino that these gaming tables right here, actually, they've got signs that say they're famous food gaming. Now, I'm gonna turn this off as I skip through the casino. Now, there's a neat central bar in the casino that has kind of this blue display on it. It almost feels like an aquarium, I would guess. Now, right behind that central bar is Croxford's Casino and Lounge. So Croxford's is the high-end hotel that is in this um, resort. There are three Hilton hotels. So there's a Hilton hotel. There's a Conrad, which is the middle tier hotel. And then there's Crockford's, which is the highest end hotel. Crockford's has its own casino and lounge, which is what we see right here. Now, this hallway will bring us into the Hilton lobby, and we'll go and take a look at the three different hotel lobbies, and then we'll work our way to the district shopping area. The first thing we're gonna see as we walk this way is we're gonna see the entrance to Genting Palace, a high-end Chinese restaurant that's here on property, the kind of place that you'll get, you know, bird's nest soup and abalone and all that stuff. I've not tried that out yet. I do look forward to it. There's a place where you can get bath treats here that look kind of like donuts. I assure you they're not donuts, but they look like donuts. Uh, Sugar Fina, where you can get some pretty high-end um, candies and Corso for jewelry. I want to point out there's this Genting lounge here, a lounge that's connected to that Chinese restaurant that I showed you. Really kind of neat Asian vibe on this. Um, not exactly sure when they open, but uh, they're not open right now. There's actually a lot of things not open. This little market isn't open. You know, they don't have enough staff, they don't have enough people. Uh, the little gift shops, there's two in the hotel lobbies. They're called the RW store. There's one in the Hilton lobby and there's one in the Conrad lobby. Now, one trend I don't like about uh, these gift shops is they don't have any prices. So you go in there and you have no idea how much anything costs. You just have to ask them, at least the food items. The merchandise has prices on it, uh, like the water and things like that don't. I think they just figure if you don't know, if you'll pick it up cashier rings you up tells you it's five dollars there you go there's this neat little artwork here called um the hippo wild ride and this is the actual check-in area for the hilton okay uh and then oh i should just show you out here this is the uh, hilton valet area every one of the hotels has its own separate valet area this is the hilton's Crockford's has its own and the Conrad has its own. So if you're checking into the hotel, make sure you get dropped off at the actual uh, check-in for your hotel and not the main valet area for the casino that we arrived at earlier. And uh, by the way, if you are self-parking, if you noticed where that self-parking was, the closest hotel lobby to it is the Hilton. Crockford's is the second closest and Conrad is the longest, That's which is where I'm staying. I feel like the walk was about seven minutes from my car to the Conrad Hotel lobby. So if you're staying at that Conrad, prepare for a little bit of a walk. I think this hallway right now didn't wasn't originally intended to be a public hallway. I think this was like a back of the house hallway and then they were like, oh, I think people are probably gonna get dropped off at the wrong lobbies and we, uh, we need to make some inner walkway so that people can get between them. Nice mirrors here so you can see yourself. So this is the Crockford's lobby. I also want to point out there's a lot of artwork around Resorts World. This is like a sumo cat. Pretty. Actually, samurai cat is what it's called. Not sumo cat. What am I talking about? Uh, not many people in the Crockford's lobby right now, but you can see it's definitely a more elegant space than the Hilton central seating area. And uh, there is a hotel bar right there in the back. I assume if you're waiting for your room and it's not ready, you can get a drink in that hotel bar. Every hotel has its own set of elevators. So the Hilton, the biggest, has its set of elevators off its lobby. 
Crockford's has its elevators that are just up this way to the right. Actually, I guess it has a second set of elevators and a second lobby, maybe some of the more high-end rooms. And then over to the left, we enter into the Conrad lobby. By the way, if you wanna see what the Conrad rooms look like, I have a whole video where I do a review of the room, um, show you, you know, the bed, the bathroom, the view, all that stuff. There's also a bar in this lobby. Uh, and this one definitely seems to be one of the most popular, just looking at the people checking in right here. And uh, some neat art right there above the concierge, this kind of multicolored glass thing. And uh, then if we go down this way, it would bring us back to the casino uh, and the resort's world store. But I'm not gonna go that way because I wanna take you to the shopping mall part of the district, which is out these doors. I should point out there are uh, two restaurants just right down that hallway that I didn't go down. There's a breakfast restaurant for like kind of egg sandwiches. Figure like 10 bucks for your breakfast sandwich and $7 for your orange juice. There is also the hotel's buffet restaurant for like if you want like a breakfast buffet. Uh, $29 will get you a breakfast buffet at the kitchen, which is what their kind of hotel buffet is called. Not really a buffet like you're thinking about like at you know caesar's palace or the cosmopolitan it's not really a full-on buffet it's definitely like more standard breakfast hotel guest buffet okay and hey looking out here you can see the circus circus off in the distance kind of here to the left uh this is the fountain blue development and we're going to go in these doors for the district shopping plaza this is kind of i don't know if i'd call this the the end or the pointy end of it, but I'll call it that, where a Carver Steak is opening on December 31st. Might be open by the time you see this video. There's Brezza, an Italian restaurant down here. Those escalators go up to the second and third floors. The third floor is home to the um, conference center or convention center. The second floor is home to more shops most of them not open yet. A lot of bars down here. One of these bars is called Bar Zazu. A lot of places to drink in this hotel. This one kind of has a neat vibe to it. Looks like they might be like carving up some ham here or something on these carving things. And then just right across the way is another bar called the Caviar Bar. No doubt where I'm sure you could get some caviar. There's uh, this neat, this playing piano right here that is a red car. Take a look at this, this is pretty cool. This thing, it's a piano and it plays music and it's a car. So I think that is pretty neat. There's also one other kind of car themed art here. This thing, which if you can't tell what it is from the side, it is a Volkswagen um, Beetle or Volkswagen um, Bug that's kind of been all squashed up and turned into a circle. There's a lounge here called Eight for Cigars. You can see they got the humidifier going to get the proper humidity. Um, this is the other side of the casino. So when we turn into Crockford's, if we didn't turn in or didn't turn into Hilton, kept walking, we'd get here eventually. There's a sushi place right here also not open. There's a Mexican restaurant called Viva, which is open for dinner just a little later. Uh, there's on the right, this cocktail lounge called Gatsby's, which looks like, I think this actually just opened, not just in time, but also just opened in date. That bath treat store that we saw before has a little bus out here. It smells really good. They haven't invented smell-o-vision yet. Uh, there's a jewelry shop right here. There's a, another like maybe purse shop. Oh, this is cool. I like this, like everything's kind of like bedazzled in here, but in particular, there's a bedazzled like R2-D2. I think that is pretty neat. OC Girl might be getting a bedazzled R2-D2 for Christmas this year. Speaking of Christmas, it's Christmas time when I'm shooting this. So they've got like Christmas trees set up and this globe in the middle does shows every hour. Um, and since it's kind of December, they've got like wintry themed stuff on it. On the right is 
Wally's fine wines and gourmet foods. And you can see there's three stories to this uh, little shopping plaza, but I'm, I'm not gonna take you up on the second floor because most of the things aren't really open up there yet. There's a vegan ice cream shop right here. There's no dairy in any of these things, but it's kind of got a neat look to it if you want some vegan ice cream. I mentioned this hotel was on the site of the Stardust. So they've got sort of a homage to Stardust artwork right here, complete with like lights and things like that. And out these doors is one of the strip entrances. There are two strip entrances, kind of central, central strip entrances. Both of them bring you into the shopping mall that you then kind of have to walk through to get to the um, casino. There's a beauty bar here, it looks like a salon. That kind of looks like a cheap opening. Maybe that'll close, I don't know. When the Vegas Loop runs here, uh, these escalators will take you down to the Vegas Loop on basement level two, currently not open. Little shop here in the middle for Raider Nation. If you wanna get some Raider gear, you can do that. As a side note, when I was like in second or third grade, I had like a Raider jacket that I just love to wear. Vaping supplies from Ignite, Fred Seagal for women's clothing. Fairly new addition here, this Mulberry Street Pizzeria. This is a pizzeria from Beverly Hills and it's got, uh, you can get two slices and a beer for $15, but they've got these Sicilian slices, these thick slices that look pretty good. And, and also their lasagna signature pizza. And uh, they've got what store looks like it's got cherry blossoms coming out of it. Uh, it's next to this kind of red tail by Zook bar on the left. Liquor infused ice cream, Albi and Ramza. And uh, the final thing here in the district shopping center is uh, Zook, the nightclub. The entrance to it is right here with that big screen. There's some conference here today called Rise Together, which is why uh, they've got these signs on it. I think Rise Together might actually be like a, I don't know if it's like a Hilton, um, like a Hil like Hilton corporate has like a conference here or something like that. And uh, if you were to come in from this other strip entrance, this is the one closest to the wind and the encore. I mean, it's a neat lobby entrance, colorful, neon, looks really cool. And they keep it really clean. There's always people wiping everything in this resort. And so I truly applaud them for that. As we come out this door, we look to the left. There is a Tacos Al Carbone, where you can get some like $4 carne asada tacos. Uh, Fat Tuesday, where you can get some kind of frozen margarita type things. We can look back on the Resorts World Tower right up there. Conrad, that's the one I'm in. It's got the other names on it as well. This is the main entrance here to the district. And then like lots of the building is just signs. Like you can see how this is just like a big light up sign here. And it tells you that globe has shows on the hour. There's a day club up there. Uh, and looking out this way, you can see the Encore, the Palazzo, uh, and the rest of the strip just down that way. Well, fellow explorers, now you've seen everything that's in Resorts World right now with the exception of all the slot machines and dealing stuff that I couldn't go through. But if you wanna see more, cause you wanna see what the inside of the Conrad room looks like, check out this video right here. Or if you wanna see more of my videos on Vegas, you can check some more out on the screen or it links in the description below. Fellow explorers, as usual, I won't say goodbye cause I'll see you in one of those videos.